Hey everyone, how are you doing? Today is Friday and can you believe it is May already? Um, it is a beautiful day out. I'm so glad that you are taking the time to come spend some time with God, uh, with followers and just kind of discern God's word and what is being said. Hey Elizabeth. Um, so yes, I'm super excited. It is a beautiful day. I hope that some people can get out and, you know, maybe take a walk or something. Uh, just look at the, the beautiful day that God has given us. I know I'm itching to get out, but I have to get out for other reasons to go pick up, um, different items to distribute. We're doing a huge, um, food and toilet de toiletry distribution to, uh, this Saturday at Cameron Park in Glendale Heights. Um, we've just come to realize there are so many families in need right now, um, especially those who come uh, from undocumented homes. You know, they don't have the luxury of the stimulus or receiving unemployment and or getting out and getting another job because the jobs that many of them had had before, um, you know, those places aren't open or their staffs have been cut in half. Um, so a lot, a lot of families are hurting right now. And so we're going to continue to come together and just pray and, you know, uh, talk about God's word see, you know, God's, how God's word is moving in our lives and, and what God is calling us and asking us to do in the midst of all this, you know? And so who knows? God, God says many things to many people and some it's different. I think that, um, you know, it is best when we come together in community to discern that. So we're going to go ahead and begin. Hey everyone. So we're going to go ahead and begin, um, in prayer. So, uh, let us just take a deep breath in. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for promising us that you are always in our midst, that you are within us, Lord. We thank you for your word. It truly is living and breathing and transformative. And so we ask that this time that we are giving to you, Lord, we are asking for your word to transform our lives into your likeness. We are asking you to open our eyes to the things that we need to see, to give us the strength and the energy and the courage to apply the things that you are calling us to do, Lord. We yearn for nothing more than to look like you in the world, and we are asking for your guidance and your courage. We put our time before you, Lord, and we thank you for this time with you. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so many of you know we are using, um, and here is the new Forward Day by Day. Um, very awesome. Like I said, I love this because we are actually um, diving in the Word of God with many, many, many other Christians um, and believers all throughout the world. So I just love that part about it. Um, Many times it gives us just a little bit of what's going on. So I kind of like to, you know, dive a little bit deeper into the scripture of what is going on. Um, we come out of 2 Corinthians today. So it's a letter to the Corinthians from St. Paul. And it's one little part, but I kind of want to read, I, you know, I'm... I'm a nerd, right? Like I went to seminary for a reason. Like I learned Hebrew and Greek for a reason. I love scripture. And so... Um, the part that they have given us, um, so this comes out of, you know, there are a lot of false teachers at the time, and there are a lot of false teachers now, right? It, here's the thing with the Holy Scripture. It's powerful. It's powerful, and it can transform lives in various ways, but it's powerful. So it could be used for good, but it could also be used for things that aren't so good. So we can take things out of context, right? And and apply it to really mean a lot of different things that it, that God had never intended. And so that's what Paul is kind of addressing right here. And he's also addressing the reality of our human fragility, right? Like life can be really hard. Um, so the one little piece of scripture that they gave is the beginning. It's the first, um, the first uh, verse. But I'm going to just read a few other verses as well because I just love it so much. So... Uh, therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. So I'm going to read that again. Therefore, since here, I'll just read the scriptures that therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. 
We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing such a great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not just ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, yet we are not crushed. We get knocked down, but we do not get destroyed. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are always being renewed day by day. Our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. And so I read a few extra verses because I love the way it touches on, you know, the first verse that they chose here in this devotional is, Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart, right? And so it is because God has called us to do these things in the world that we are not to lose heart. But I wanted to read on a little bit in the letter. You know, I love the way we are described as clay jars, right? We're, we're fragile, but there's something so precious inside of us. Like the spirit of God lives inside of us, yet we're humanly very fragile. And although we're pressed on all different sides by the world and things to come, you know, we're to, we don't break because of because of the spirit of God within us. And so I just wanted to read some of that on a little bit. Now let's go on with the devotional. Um, we Christians are not always kind to one another. Shocker. And when we are in these trenches, knee deep in a capital campaign, or mud up to our shoulders in program shifts or cultural change, we are often not our best selves. Somehow the snide comments and sharp elbows land a little harder when they are in church settings. We are supposed to be better than that, right? But here's the thing about the church. In Paul's time and in ours, the Christian community is made up of real people with real flaws. We are not perfect like Jesus, we get angry when we ought not to. We lash out or turn sour or act selfishly. We allow fear or change or failure or even what might happen if we succeed to become our dividing rod. But Paul urges the people of Cor Corinth and us today to not lose heart, to stay laser focused on the great but not easy calling to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord. Following this div divine rod will take us always to the living water. And so I really like this today. I mean, it really speaks into the truth of, you know, um, it's so true, right? Like, a, like Christians, it's, it's an extra layer when, when a Christian does something, you know, um, you know, people are like, see, that's why I don't go to church. But we so often forget that like, you can't like the beauty of what the church is and scripture and that it's mo living and breathing and all that it has to offer and how it empowers our lives should not be, as you rely on the actions or words of someone who claims to be a follower, right? I mean, who, someone who is a follower, we're all broken, right? I mean, and as I read in some of the scripture, we're like clay jars, easily fragile, can crack easily. We make mistakes, you know, um, we're not perfect. We get angry, lash out, you know, act selfishly. I mean, that's the reality of it. But Paul urges us regardless to not lose heart. I think not lose heart when we ourselves act kind of foolish, you know? Um, the one reason I wear my collar all the time where, you know, they want us to do it as well, but I, I often wear it when I'm out and about because, you know, it holds me accountable. It holds me accountable because when I, you know, when I start to feel my blood, you know, rising because someone slams into me with their cart or moves me over or disregards that I'm even there or whatever, cuts me off in traffic or even a family member, we're in a little bit, we're in a disagreement, right? If I am in collar, it is, it holds me accountable that what I do and what I say in this moment is powerful because 
people are not just seeing me as me right they're seeing and they and and they don't just see you as you even though you're like well i'm not a priest so i'm off the hook no you're a follower of christ the first thing people do is say oh well that wasn't very christ-like or mm, oh real good christian you know but the truth is i think we need to give ourselves you know this grace as well that we're human we're fragile we're like clay jars that could be easily broken but we're not easily broken because the spirit of God is within us. And so we're able to persevere, right? Um, in all kinds of circumstances and losses and pain and, and you know, trials and illnesses and, and all that. I mean, that's the beauty of the spirit of God inside of us and our biggest gift. Um, <clears throat> so what do you guys think about this? What do you think about, what do you feel um, about this reality that um, the church is made up of a lot of broken people? Everyone is broken, right? Both inside and outside the church. So why should we be any different? Um, you know, dealing with the realities. We should be different in that we work hard to look like Christ. But what do you guys think about that? Of what's being said here about... Um, how about you, Sally? You think anything come to mind or Ada? Not really. Um... Hmm? Oh, either Ada, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah, I, I agree with you that sometimes we really, even though we don't have a color or anything like that, but uh, we, no matter what, we fail to, to be a good Christian in one way or another. And then later on we realize, oh my gosh, I should not have said or do or whatever that way. That wasn't Christian-like. But uh, thank God that, that we have a Christ that forgives us. You know, if we truly feel sorry and repent of what we have done, what we have offended someone, yeah. that we have uh, hurt someone, that we have betrayed someone, you know, and uh, if we truly repent and try not to do it again, I think uh, he will uh, forgive us. Oh, absolutely. I think the beauty is even if we do mess up over and over again, we we are forgiven. Like that's the beauty of it. It's, you know, I, I know you can't see this, but therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. So God's mercy here, it's the same word used in the Hebrew, which is hesed. And so hesed is it's beyond, I actually love the Hased so much that when I was in Jerusalem, I got that tattooed in Hebrew on me. But this idea of Hased is a deep, um, forgiving, ridiculously loving, faithful um, mercy. Like it's, it is the story of, you know, where, um, that prophet had to marry the Gomer, the, the prostitute. And, and he was called by God to just, even though she cheated all the time, just to continuously, uh, meet her with love, meet her with forgiveness, meet her with kindness, meet her with compassion. And so, um, so Ada, some, so Eileen said, you are one of the most strong women I know that, <laughs> she loves you. <laughs> so, yeah. That must be where they got the name for the Hesed House in Aurora. Yeah, Hesed House. It has that meaning. Yeah, it is that meaning of, you know, like regardless of what we do, we can act a mess, you know. And our goal is, right, like Ada said, like to repent, which just means to turn. To turn from the way we've been to a new way, right? If we're used to, if we naturally are used to just, you know, getting angry right away and coming back with power and, you know, to repent from that, to turn from that is to take a moment and to use the word of God, right? Like, and, and to put it in your head. I, I know that I would do that. I would take James where it says, you know, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. I would say that over and over and over in my head as the other person was kind of, you know, getting excited so that I myself didn't meet power with power and anger with anger and aggression with aggression. Um, Maybe we all need that tattooed on us. We all. 
we all do need it tattooed on our hearts. So <laughs> that's what it's about. Um, so Gwen says, but forgiveness goes both ways. We can't ask for forgiveness if we aren't able to forgive. That is so true. And how easy it is to expect or, you know, be perplexed why somebody hasn't forgiven us yet or how come. And, and that's what moves me to continuously forgive, you know, regardless of what has happened or how hurt I've been from something. And some people have said, you know, throughout my life, like, have you lost your mind? Like, you need to write that person off, let alone, why are you even kind of talking, you know, okay about them or allowing them, you know, to come over to this function or whatever. And it's like, because how can you live with yourself? If, if I'm so willingly and openly and eager to accept the forgiveness and love and outpoured mercy and has said, right, this relationship, this merciful, gracious, loving, giving relationship with God, but then I'm not going to give that. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to. Nope. Well, come on. Then I'm, con then I'm a hypocrite, right? And then and that's not how God calls us. Because like I said yesterday... It is about a relationship like this with God. You know, we love God and God continuously loves us. And we give time to God and God gives time to us. And we, it's this beautiful thing happening there. But then the second part, because there's two great commands, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? So we are supposed to be putting that love back out there giving that gracious forgiveness. You know, Jesus came back as the forgiving victim, as the one who was abandoned, rejected, unjustly, you know, persecuted, murdered. And and he came back not ticked off or pointing fingers or angry or, you know, condemning or letting everyone know how they messed up. He came back just giving people shalom. He says shalom. God's peace and wholeness and, and, and all that beauty, just, just that's all he, he is giving to them when he first confronts them. And so if we, if, if we can accept that, we need to be able to offer that back. And so that is really what moves me to forgive when I'm like, mm, I'm right. I should not No, I can't do it. I don't know. It's like, that's what, that's what moves me to be able to forgive. Um, yeah. Cause we can't, you know, it's, it's just hypocritical to want something from God, you know, and, you know, we ask God, hey, God, um, you know, provide for me. You promise to provide abundantly. You promise to always be there. You know, we pray these things sometimes, but then when God puts other people in our path that are in need, we also need to be aware of now what do we have to graciously offer? What do we have to give, right? Like, so Jesus is always giving from what little he had, right? And trusting that God will miraculously provide. We're to be that kind of people as well. Um, one of the best lessons I've learned in life is that forgiving someone is for me. Yes, not for them. It is not condemning how they hurt, betrayed you. It is about releasing that hurt betrayal from my heart. Amen to that. Like, you are absolutely right, Liz. That is the irony and the beauty in continually forgiving and the gift of forgiveness. And that's why God tells us to do these things. Because the truth is, the gift is for you. I cannot explain the pain I felt, you know, and the hurt I felt when I, when I thought I was getting married to this gentleman and our wedding was six months away. We put a down payment on everything and we were going to get a big home together. And I found out he had been cheating with numerous women. And so the ability, and it was a process. It wasn't like, I forgive you because Jesus is in my heart. No, no, that is not realistic. It doesn't work like that. Maybe for some people it has, and that was a miracle and a gift from God. But for the rest of us, that is a, it is a process. But I really have no pain in my heart about it. No resentment or anger. I don't think about it. It was the most healing experience for myself as well as him in you know, being able to love him uh, as a as a brother in Christ and, you know, care for him and pray for him and walk alongside him in his addiction safely with boundaries, right? Um, but at the same time, not let him back in my life like that because we're also called, Proverbs tells us, protect your heart for it is the wellspring of life. If we, we are called to protect our hearts, to do things in our life where our hearts are protected. If I would have went back in a relationship with him, that wouldn't have been protecting my heart, right? 
it, because in my life would have went a whole different direction. It would have been filled with years of pain and continually cheating because he has an addiction issue. And so I didn't, I needed to guard my heart so that, you know, my life went into, went down the path God had called and wanted and desired it to do that. And so I need energy for that. You need energy for that. And so we are still called to protect our hearts in the midst of that. Um, forgiveness is good for the soul. A healthy soul is at peace. Yes, it is. It's, and it, we can't, you so, you know, when someone isn't, you know, when someone is anxious or not at peace, you know that there's heavy things on their heart. Sometimes, you know, I think it's, it's really good to remind ourselves too, when people are snapping off or when people are angry or when people are, you know, um, just irritable, like hurt people tend to hurt people. So sometimes, you know, some of the most, you know, kind of just abrasive and not nice people, they're carrying a lot of pain with them. And uh, um, a lot of that pain is maybe not being able to forgive others. Like the sad part is, even if we were wronged and we were the victim, that's just layer upon layer upon layer in us. And we're just hurting ourselves. And then we get, you know, uglier inside and uglier and, and more hurt and pain. We're carrying so much. And God just wants us to be able to release that. And part of the way of releasing that is by allowing ourselves to really forgive and to let go. And that's a process. Um, you were more than blind. Oh, you were more blind than your blind sister. That's my mom making a comment about who I was with. Yes. Love can be blind. And so, you know, that's part of it too, right? That's why I can't tell you how much I continuously pray for God's wisdom, you know, uh, discernment. I, I'm telling you, I, I said, I make jokes often, like now I kind of get arranged marriages. Like people around you know what you need sometimes more than you do because love can be blind. Um, but that's where it's important too. I've changed my whole strategy plan. You know, I just seek God, right? Like continuously praying to God, asking God, talking to good, you know, fellow people I respect and and who have integrity and, you know, um, other believers about things and, um, and able to process it with anything, right? Whether you want, you have questions about a job or a relationship or which way to go. We are a community that are called to pray for one another, to discern together, you know, and to be there for one another and to lift each other up. And so that's what it's about. Um, you cannot be verbally you cannot be verbally accepting of all peoples and then accept them only on them on your oh only, accept them only on your terms. God did not do this and it's not easy. Absolutely. So I don't think I ever oh, experienced that one as much as when I was teaching in the jails and um I was teaching women uh courses on codependency. And some of the women, sometimes they would get extremely catty with one another and there would be some name calling back and forth and whatever. Um, one of the women was a woman who had murdered her children. And so, um, you know, I was fine until like, you know, some of the, I didn't know, right, what they were in for until comments came from one woman and, you know, it was about her murder and her kids and, you know, and um, listening to the mom, right? The woman, uh, just say, she started sobbing and she said, do you think I wanted to do that? I tried to get help for months. She's like, I don't, she turns out she was schizophrenic, right? Um, and, and not medicated and, um, had been going to numerous places saying that she's having these danger, you know, these thoughts that are dangerous, right? Not only to herself, but to others, you know, not specifically her kids at the time, but just these, these thoughts that were just not feeling normal to her. And so, um, I just kind of remember feeling like a distant, like I didn't want to be in the same room as her are. There was like a disgust and an anger, right? Like as a mother, like this weird, like righteous, like how do you kill your kid? Like, like, and then I was just like overwhelmed by God's grace and God's love. It was all happened like literally, I think within a minute and 30 seconds or two minutes or something. Like I just saw her so differently. I just saw her as this broken hurting woman um, that did something that she will forever have to live with and is so regretful of and 
doesn't even know, couldn't, it wants to stay in prison because she knows that's where she belongs because she could never take back what she did and she has no idea why she did what she did and has no real recollection of, you know, what had happened in that moment and there's just so much sorrow and pain and hurt and my heart just went out to her and I saw her so differently and I needed that from God, right? Like I needed that vision. I needed that gracious gift at that moment so I can continue to walk alongside her and help teach her tools that she'll need, um, whether she spends the rest of her life in prison or not. Like she can, you know, God brings life out of death. And, and brings life and hope out of even situations that to us appear as death. So she hasn't lost her life and she still has potential to have good relationships in prison and to empower people in prison and to live out, you know, into the woman God created her to be. You know, she has, a medic, she has medication now and she's being seen now and cared for now. And so, but I needed that. And so I think I was convicted in that and that, you know, we can't say we're accepting of all people and we love all people, but then not them, you know, not those in prison, not thieves, not that group of people. Cause we know how that group is, right? That group is, you know, destructive or this or that, like, that's the story. Like, it's not the good news. If it builds walls, if it divides, it's only the good news. If, if all are welcome. And there is this hesed and this mercy. And that is the beauty of it. That's why we're not to lose heart. Because the continual love and forgiveness and mercy that God gives us is ever flowing. We don't deserve it. We could do nothing to deserve it. But it's going to continuously come regardless of what we do. And so that's the beauty of that. Um, so... Yeah, so we are coming up on our time. Um, so the moving forward, I'm a little confused about, but I'll give it to you and then I'll just give you my own too. So the moving forward is do some research about water-based, uh, about water-related ministries with Episcopal Relief and Development. And I think the purpose of that is, you know, really just to get outside of ourselves, right? to do some research on how to help others, which right now, I mean, we don't have to go far. We're in a pandemic right now. There are a lot of people who are hurting. There are a lot of people who are isolated. There are a lot of people who have nothing but time, you know, to reflect in a way they didn't before. And so they're reflecting on a lot of things that, that they may not be, you know, too happy about, like, you know, dreams that never came to fruition or the fact that they haven't seen their children or grandchildren in a long time or maybe, you know, the fact that they never went to a certain school or took a certain job or married a certain person or whatever. You know, when we have time, you know, it could... It, it could be uh, it could be overwhelming, right? And so this is a time when we are absolutely supposed to be, you know, coming together and you know discerning, you know, what it what God is calling us to do and what these things as they're coming up in our minds and our hearts, what they mean and what we're supposed to do with them, and just share with each other and you know pray for one another and um, be there for others as we can, right? We're not supposed to live out of scarcity, but we know we have a God that provides abundantly. So don't. Don't be afraid to give, you know, of, of whatever it is, you know, that you feel God is like kind of put on your heart, right? Because God will provide. We don't have to worry about that part. We just have to trust. And so let us, um, so let us remember that as we move forward, that regardless of what you do, you are loved and graciously forgiven. And so please go out and do the same. Please go out and be the same um, that God is for us because that is the good news. It's only when we live that out. And so we will end on our prayers. We pray every, we end every um, session with uh, prayers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, bless, yes, blessings to all those with the coronavirus. Um, for today, let's pray especially for those in need of food and their families. Yes, absolutely. As we'll be, please keep us in your prayers as we go out on Saturday. We're expecting around 500 families in Glendale Heights uh, who are in need. Um, I want to thank everybody who's graciously given toiletries or made masks 
or done, you know, anything to be able to help with this that, you know, my, my kid and her, uh, Priscilla and her friend, Michael, were here working till all hours, like, you know, putting things in bags and helping just kind of organize. So we are ready for Saturday. There are lots of people in need. Um, so please, yeah, we're going to hold them up in prayers as well. When I say we pray, you say, Lord, hear our prayer. As the world works to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus, we offer our prayers for all who suffer or face any kind of troubles. God of love, creator, and healer, we look after all those affected by the coronavirus. Bring strength, healing, and peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, our elders, and those especially at risk of severe illness, especially those who have been diagnosed during this time, John or Laura, or any of those we name now aloud or who are heavy on our hearts. May they receive the care they need and know they are loved and valued. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection and safety for all healthcare workers risking their own well-being for the sake of others. And for all those who venture out to either provide for others in need of food or toiletries or for those who go out to work to provide for their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials and leaders, may they make wise decisions to keep those they lead safe, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who are quarantined and working or learning at home, May they experience joy, tranquility, health, and productivity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us respond to our circumstances with caution instead of fear, especially if we are anxious and worried. Comfort us with your peace that passes understanding. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we'll pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his light on you all the days of your life and keep you safe. Amen. God bless. Now go out there and forgive and be loving.